Alright boys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to break down this Ryan Taylor fight. On October the 14th, he is having a rematch against Swarms. In the first fight, he lost by TKO. Swarms pretty much just hit him with a strong jab and it fractured Ryan's orbital bone. Now we've got a little bit of a problem with breaking down this video. Anytime we use any of the Zone's YouTube footage, they completely block the video. They don't just copyright it where all the AdSense goes to them. No, they completely block the video entirely from even being uploaded. So in order to break down Ryan Ryan Taylor's game plan. We need to use still images and shorter clips. But in this video, we're going to break down what Ryan Taylor's game plan is going to be going up against Swarms. Now, we can't really analyze the Swarms fight because nothing really happens. So the best thing we can do is to use the footage of him fighting Slim. And I'm actually going to take the footage from this dude's video, Mav Me, because we know the footage that he's used isn't blocked from YouTube. Let's watch a little bit of the fight and see if we can get an idea about Ryan Taylor's game plan going into this rematch with Swarms. One thing we have to remember here is Slim was apparently 20 pounds lighter than Ryan in this fight. So Ryan had a big size advantage. Okay, so we've thrown the jab there. Right, now what we can see already is when Slim's throwing combinations, Ryan's extending his arms out and then pulling in for the clinch. And this is an actual way of defending yourself. It's a type of guard in boxing. Dmitry Bilov, is it? Is that how you pronounce it? He uses this guard a lot. Now we can put two and two together here. The reason why Ryan reaches out, this is just my theory, he's a bigger lad. When he gets into fights, he's used to using his size as an advantage. As I always say, size matters more when you're grappling than it does when you're striking. So if you're the bigger lad and you can't get the better of someone in the striking department, but then you reach out and grab them now you've got the advantage but this is boxing my friends you can't do that the clinch will just be split up so let's make note of how many times ryan goes for this clinch as he got deeper into the fight he did do it a little bit less because he realized he has got a bit of a chin and can take a punch back of the head punches looking down a little bit So we can see there, just by the last few seconds, Ryan is used to applying a lot of pressure. He looks away a lot. He looks down a lot. You can see Slim has his eyes forward. He's always got his head upright and a good guard, whereas Ryan throws punches and looks down and turns away. We can see there as well as guard is out once again, as opposed to being close in. If he's in the clinch position and he exits with his guard out there against someone like Swarms with a lot of power, look out for him getting clipped as he's exiting the clinch. You need to be on your P's and Q's when you're exiting the clinch. You need to keep your guard close. In fact, the first lad who Ryan Taylor fought, who he headbutted, this happened to him in one of his last fights. He exited the clinch with his guard down and then got completely KO'd in a fight that he was doing pretty decent in. So Ryan needs to be careful doing this. Now, one thing I've noticed is Ryan does pretty okay at having a high guard. I know that gives Slim problems in this fight. He couldn't actually penetrate his guard that much. But one thing he does bad is that high guard just completely disappears when he's throwing punches. So when he's trying to be defensive, he's pretty good. He'll keep his guard up. But then when he's actually on the attack, he's got no defense whatsoever. It's just kind of these big wing and punches. Now, if he hasn't fixed that hole in his game, that's something the Swarms could capitalize on. As Ryan is coming in, can Swarms counter Ryan? Watch Ryan close especially as he's attacking okay we'll do it frame by frame almost so look at his arms look where his guard is he tends to have a high guard when he's defending but watch as he attacks now so if we just do it a couple frames by a couple frames first off right there we can see Ryan's trying to go for the, the clinch, the choke, the, the headlock. You can see the way his left arm's trying to wrap around the back of Slim, but he's not in a good position to do that there. And then when he realizes he's not successful, he turns round. Now watch his left arm. Watch, he throws his right hand now. Where's his left arm? Down by his waist. Right there. Perfectly open for a right hand. He got the hook. He got the right straight down the pipe. His arms are completely crossed over. He's completely out of position. And from this position, he'll probably just wing the left hand. And his right hand will be nowhere to be seen as well. So we watch. And referee's in the way there. See, like, what are the hands doing? There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of erratic movements especially when Ryan is on the attack. And I know it's very easy to do this frame by frame and point out holes. Of course, he's not a professional boxer. Let's give him that. Give him the benefit of the doubt. We're just talking here about what Ryan should and shouldn't do if he wants to win against Swarms in this next fight. Here, perfect opportunity for the uppercut. He does dip his head a lot. And then there, once he realizes he can't really get swim and he's getting clipped a lot, he goes in for the clinch once again and tries to use his size to 
overpower his opponent. Now, this did actually work later on in the fight. Ryan Taylor, because he had the extra body weight, started gas and slim out a little bit. Slim's fighting the bigger opponent, and when you're doing that, you better have amazing cardio, because cardio is a weapon when you were going up against the bigger opponent. When we look at that exchange again, Ryan did actually get clipped on the way in, so Slim did a good job countering here, so watch... So Ryan Taylor comes in now, and it's the left hook by Slim, right here. You see, where's Ryan's guard? Where's his right hand? It's down here by his chest. Where's his eyes? He's not even looking at his opponent. His chin isn't quite tucked. He's doing the flamingo, balancing on one leg. Slim, with a perfect shot right here on top of the temple. Boom. Right there. And that's what rocks Ryan Taylor. And that's why he goes in for the clinch. And if we also look at this position here, once again, Ryan Taylor tends to have his guard out a lot. He reaches, he drops his guard. This is the perfect position for the right overhand. This is a technique that I employ all the time when I'm fighting bigger opponents. Let them rush in. As they get close enough, you dip your head down off the center line and throw that right overhand over that shoulder and you'll connect with them clean. This was a perfect opportunity right here for Slim to crack him with the overhand. He didn't, but the position is there. And now, look what's going to happen. Ryan Taylor's going to do exactly the same thing. He's going to come rushing in. Slim has made the read. Every time he's clipped Ryan in this fight, it's been when Ryan's been rushing in. So, good fight IQ by Slim here. Slim's got his eyes on Ryan. And watch what happens. Here we go. Boom. Perfect shot. Absolute perfect shot. Let's watch it again. Great speed as well. Bang. Amazing. Pay attention what Slim does here. He gets his head off the center line. He doesn't just throw like this. He gets his head right over here and throws the overhand right. Ryan keeps his head on the center line. That's something that we never really see. We don't see any head movement, even when he throws punches. He's not jabbing and slipping his head off the center line. He doesn't slip this way when he's throwing a right. There's never really any head movement. Watch where Slim's head is when he throws the punch. Boom. Perfect. Where's Ryan's punch going? Right to the center. Where Slim's head used to be. Beautiful technique by Slim. Now, Ryan's done well to take that punch. Oh, look at that for a still screenshot. <laughs> so, once again, Ryan's got his head up in the air. His left arm is down by his waist and his right hand's out here. So, if we explain it a little bit, Ryan will have his guard high. But then, as he rushes in, everything just drops to his waist. He'll go... Ugh! And he just opens himself up. His guard goes down and his hands come right out here. And it's very difficult to fix these things in a short amount of time. If you see me Tom Aspinall versus Eddie Hall video the other day, you can go and watch that here. Even Tom Aspinall said the bigger fellas aren't used to being the nail. They're not used to losing. So they learn less because they're used to being able to use the size to bully people. And Ryan Taylor's that guy. Is he going to be able to learn much in between fights because he's the bigger guy? Has he been able to drop his ego to allow himself to learn? Is he getting beat up in sparring because that's important you need to kind of take a beating and lose a lot in your training in order to get better the last thing you want is yes men around you and that's the question has ryan got a bunch of yes men around him to keep his ego intact or has he bit the bullet swallowed his pride understood that he needs to be the nail in order for him to get better because if he hasn't i think we're just going to see more of the same what we're seeing here let's continue boom perfect shot that i'll give him his due he came back strong after getting dropped. See, look, that's good. That's a good high guard. I'm not sure if that was in between rounds that he was told to keep a high guard, but he's got good solid defense. We've given the benefit of the doubt here, lads. I know everyone was ripping him in the last video, but like we've got to look and say, right, objectively, what's he doing good and what's he doing bad? When he's not attacking, he's got good defense. Right here now. Watch, high guard, no punches really get through. It's good. Good work. So the key there is to obviously go to the body. Bring his guard high and then you fake a jab and rip a left hook to the body. When people make that defensive adjustment and they start going high guard, you also have to make a counter adjustment. Especially once again, going up against the bigger guy. I'm used to fighting a lot of taller lads. It's so much easier for me to just rip to the body than it is to reach up against someone who's 6'4", 6 6'6". 6 6. And then once their guard's being brought down a little bit from the absolute crazy left hook to the body, and a super fast, deceptive spin and back kick that will literally crack a rib. Then I can go to the head. So Ryan... Good work with the high guard. Don't jump me at the event. I haven't been out in a year, and I'd like a nice little Johnny Walker blue label with me mates without any drama, please. <laughs> what will be, will be. Yeah, so Slim just needed to get some body shots in here. He was headhunting a bit. And that's the problem when you knock someone down. 
Or you almost KO someone. You start headhunting because you want to replicate that same outcome. Once again, Ryan just using his weights, wrestling the lad. Like he just throws him down. That's frustration. He's shouting at him. He's spitting on him. Didn't at one point he spit blood at Slim as well? See, good high guard by Ryan. Pretty decent. Slim just needs to get to the body. Yeah, see, yeah. Little, little get in he. Look, watch him spit now. Watch Ryan's face. Yeah, he. Look. Ah, you little bastard. No sportsmanship whatsoever. See, this is where Ryan started doing a little bit better. He was using his weight to an advantage. Slim was gassing. He wasn't really rocked here. He was just really gassed from piling on all that pressure, trying to get Ryan out of there. Uh, great shots by Slim. Once again, not really being defensively sound by Ryan. Uh, if you look at Slim, see, that's good. Good pressure by Ryan. Slim was obviously gassed here. Didn't have enough energy to be able to counter him. So Ryan's done the right job against Slim. He kept up that pressure. He just needs to keep his guards up more. This fight was a, a war, to be fair, like... Oh yeah, nice right arm by Slim there. See that? Boom. Boom, there. Really good fight, this. Really, really good fight. And for those that don't know, I had a few people say on my last video about Ryan Taylor is an idiot. About the fact that he jumped slim pre-fight. I wanted to react to it, but every time I've watched the video on YouTube, it's been age-restricted. And if the video gets age-restricted, barely anyone sees it. It just gets buried in the algorithm. And we're trying to reach 100k before the end of the year, boys. So make sure you subscribe with those notifications turn on. But here's some of the screenshots from Slim's channel. If I mute it, and then play-by-play, play, Slim's ready with the right hand. And then Ryan throws a low kick. Very sloppily, I might add. Coming from the kicking master. Right here. It hits Slim in the ass, and then they pretty much just end up grappling. Once again, as we talk about the bigger men, because it's their go to easy way to victory. And then nothing really happens from there. He basically ends up just in a bit of a grapple. Ryan Taylor's got Slim in a headlock. Not choking him out, just a headlock. And that's the thing with these big lads, is they don't know how to actually choke people out. They just know how to get people in a headlock. You can't see me cursor, but you got this guy on the left behind Ryan Taylor. That's Slim's mate, Adam Saleh, I think it is. He was grappling with Ryan Taylor's coach, the black. Black lads behind Ryan and Slim was trying to punch Ryan in the head but with barely any power because you can't really do any damage when you're in a headlock and then Ryan Taylor's coach grabs Slim's hand so he can't punch him and then that's kind of it pretty much gets broken up after that nothing really happens now we also uploaded this to his Twitter little bit of new pad work footage let's have a little look see what he's doing Okay, throw on the right hand. Let's watch that again. You know, that's not too bad. He's learned to get his head off the center line. Question is, can he do this in the fight? Let's watch again. Yeah, okay, good. I can't really tell where his eyes are. Are they looking at the floor? You can get away with that, but you've got to have really good accuracy and then make sure that you're getting right back into position. Okay, he's moving around okay. He's light on his feet. He looks a little bit leaner. Okay. So, obviously, working on the overhand. I think if Ryan Taylor has got any chance of victory here, this is going to be the shot that gets it done. But at the end of the day, he's a big lad. He has got power. He's been boxing for a little bit now. Okay, he hasn't got any wins yet, but the experience still counts for something. But Swarms is dense. He's thick. He's also got that power. He's got that fast, twitchy style. So the question is, can Ryan Taylor implement his game plan and land this overhand right on Swarms? Or are we just going to see a repeat of what he did in the slim fight? We had all this amazing pad work and this great footwork and keeping your guards up and getting your head off the center line gets completely thrown out the moment that you're actually in the fight because that's usually what happens. As soon as the adrenaline's going, you're under the bright lights. All that technique gets thrown by the wayside and it doesn't really become second nature until you've put thousands upon thousands 
thousands upon thousands of reps in. I say all the time, anyone can look like a world beater on the pads, on the heavy bag, but we're not really going to know until he gets in there. I'm also going to do breakdowns of the fights after the fact as well, so make sure you subscribe for that. Boys, there's also so much other content I want to get out. I'm just struggling to find the time. Because we've got this storyline of this boxing event coming up, and there's a lot of content to cover around it, it's just kind of taking up the majority of the videos. But there's certain UFC things I want to cover, there's other videos I want to react to, and there's a few fitness and steroid things I want to put out there as well. So make sure you subscribe for all that. And whilst I'm in the process of getting me Discord set up, DM me on Instagram if you've got any video suggestions. At the moment, I get so many every single day, so I try my best to get back to everyone. If you've sent me a nice supportive message, I appreciate you. It might be the same day I get back to you. It might be seven days later, but it's tough trying to run a real world business, an online program business, and a YouTube channel, and then get back to everyone. But I appreciate all the love and support. I honestly do. 100K is around the corner. We just hit 70. Thanks so much. Honestly, it really is appreciated. We started this year with a 1,000 subscribers. So 1,000 to 100,000 in a year. It's a great story, isn't it? Okay, nice one, boys. Like this video, and I'll see you all tomorrow.